It is a sad day for streaming today. TC Helicon have announced today that basically, in a nutshell, they are discontinuing the GoXLR. Not directly, but kind of indirectly. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a full breakdown of what exactly has happened, how it affects you, what you should do if you have a GoXLR, and also run through some alternatives for you to consider and my take on the ones that I've got experience with. On this channel, I've created something like seven or eight different videos around the Go XLR. I love the device. I've had it for about two and a half years. I actually have the Go XLR Mini, but it's a brilliant device. It has been a staple for streamers throughout the world, and it is a real shame that TC Helicon are effectively making it defunct uh, in their actions recently. Stay tuned for all the lowdown on the Go XLR discontinuation. Let's go. So what exactly has happened here? Well, basically in the official GoXLR Discord, it was announced today, uh, I think that was actually yesterday, a number of staff in the Canadian office had been made redundant. So basically just been laid off, pretty much immediate effect. Basically means that the staff that were responsible for the firmware, the driver support, the software support, will no longer be uh, available because they're obviously not being paid to do that anymore. Now, just to give you some kind of numbers around this, this was probably one of the most popular devices for streamers. I know that because I see the video views that my GoXLR videos get, and for years now, they've been some of my most popular videos alongside the Elgato Stream Deck videos that I have frequently done as well. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that your GoXLR will suddenly explode on your desk and stop working, and we'll get into the details about that in a second. What this does mean is there's a bleak future for the Go XLR, and it's really frustrating that that is the case. A little bit of background here. This is a product that has done so well over the years. It's It basically just seems to work. This barely breaks. I've very rarely had instances of people contacting me to say that it doesn't work. Once it's set up properly, it's just one of those things that is like a tank on your desk. It just works. It just does really well. What's happened, though, over the years is for for some reason, TC Helicon have not really brought out any more products for the streaming space. They had a number of staff leave to set up Beacons audio devices, which we'll get into briefly later. And essentially, they've just not really leveraged their position in the market as an audio expert for streamers. And that's crazy because the streaming market itself has also something like doubled or tripled in size in the last four or five years. So if somebody like Elgato would have had hold of the GoXLR product, they would have been able to capitalize through all kinds of different products, in particular, even digital products. For example, Elgato have released a digital version recently on their iOS, a digital version of the Stream Deck software where you can use an Apple device or something like that to control your stream. And that is an ongoing subscription-based business model. GoXLR never really did anything like this. They just sold the products, didn't release any more products, they supported it to a reasonable level, but it didn't really need a whole lot of support. A lot of the support centers around people that have changed PCs, maybe they've moved houses or they've had some sort of other kind of critical issue that's happened with their PC. Other than that, most of the support is how do you set up the Go XLR? And I know that because I've had so many hits on my Go XLR videos. It's just such a shame that TC Helicon didn't progress with this product, leverage their position in the market bring out different products circled around streamers. Really, really frustrating for me as an advocate of the GoXLR device. So what does this actually mean? Well, essentially, future versions of their software will not be released or supported. What that means is that eventually there will be conflicts with the software. Eventually, the software will have more and more problems, and it may mean that in the future, and maybe even in the near future, i.e. the next three to six months, the GoXLR will more than likely cease to work or function properly. Now, all this depends on the version of the GoXLR software you have and also the version of Windows that you have. There is some positive news here. However, there is an open source piece of software that is being developed. This is the GoXLR utility that's being developed here. I believe this is the one here. It's an unofficial 
Go XLR app replacement. I'll link the GitHub. These guys are placing it for Linux and Mac OS as well as Windows. So that's obviously a good thing, but it is not easy to, to develop these things and it's not easy to roll them out and support them. And trust me, from somebody that gets a lot of support messages, this can be more than a full-time job. They say in the Discord post that this is a full-time job. I suspect this will be the full-time job for multiple staff members, actually, which obviously costs money every month and that is an ongoing cost, which is great if you've got an ongoing revenue stream but I don't think TC Helicon and GoXLA had that because they had no digital products and they weren't releasing new products. So how exactly is this going to affect you? Well basically right now today your GoXLA should work as normal unless you start updating to weird versions or backdating things or doing something very odd with your GoXLA. It should work at least for a few months more. I would say that this time in a year or two though there's no chance of you, your GoXLR working. That's an approximation, but there's a high chance that that will be the case. And this is because there will always be software conflicts. And if there's no team there to help you sort through that or to develop it and get it updated, the app won't be released and improved and firmware updates and things like that. Therefore, the device basically becomes something like a paperweight over time. So if you're a streamer and you want to have something to control your audio on stream in a similar way to your GoXLR, you're going to need some alternatives and I'm going to go through some of those alternatives right now. I'm also going to be discussing the pricing as well because I'm sure people want to know a lot more about the price of some of these alternatives, not just the actual functional replacement. First of all, we're talking about the GoXLR Mini here and the full-sized GoXLR. Now, depending on which of those two devices you had would probably depend on what kind of budget you were looking at. The GoXLR Mini was about £159 as of today. That's around about $200, although you'll probably get it cheaper in America because the British people get stiffed with a really bad exchange rate when it comes to uh, tech and hardware like this. In comparison, the GoXLR Large at £322 if you're in the UK or £409 if you're in the US, probably a bit lower. That's the kind of budgets that we're looking at here and I'll try and give you some good alternatives around those levels. Now the GoXLR Mini just had the basic mixer with four faders and a mute button, whereas the full-size GoXLR had some other DSer functions function built into the software and also some sound boards as well built into it but really fundamentally the hardware of the mini and the full sized in terms of the audio quality the XLR cartridges and things like that was basically the same and there were still four faders across both the full sized and the mini. The obvious replacement to me would be one of two options in my opinion. First of all the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Mix Create are two things that have been directly created to compete with the GoXLR and they were actually made with staff members that used to work for TC Helicon. The Beacon Mix is £154 or $159. You'll probably get it a bit lower. I'll probably say that throughout this video because we really do get done over with the uh, exchange rate in the UK. The Mix Create is a little bit more expensive at £202 or $256. Now these basically have four faders on them, but they are obviously knobs rather than uh, f full faders. But functionally, it's a very similar type of software. It has an XLR input, so you can still use your XLR microphone phone and it has most of the same functions that you had on the XLR like routing capability, audio kind of microphone setup, some basic level of microphone engineering which was actually better on the Beacon. Although the Beacon did have some negative feedback when it was first released, I've never tested it personally but I believe it had mixed feedback when it was received. I have personally tested the Roland Bridgecast, Roland being a really huge audio brand although not very experienced in live streaming. Check out the video up here if you want to check out exactly what that review looks like and a little bit more about the Bridgecast. I can say that functionally there's pretty much a direct like for like from comparison between the GoXLR full-sized and the Bridgecast. I did have some problems setting up the software on the Bridgecast but overall the quality of the device was brilliant and it came in at £215 which was cheaper than the full-size GoXLR but more expensive 
and the Go XLR Mini. Probably the main other comparator, uh, if you're really gonna go with like a well-established project other than the Beacon, would be the Elgato Stream Deck Plus, which has four sort of toggles on the bottom and was released about one year ago, but that does not have an XLR input. You cannot buy a Stream Deck Plus and expect to plug in your XLR microphone and it works. It does not have the XLR input. You'll need to separately buy some sort of XLR input device. Luckily, Elgato do have the Wave XLR, which is an input device for it and works really well with all of their kind of software ecosystem. I've not tested either of those two devices, although I have tested many, many Stream Deck devices and I've got something like 30 tutorials about the Stream Deck. However, those two products combined are a lot more expensive than the Go XLR Mini. You'd be looking at around about £348 to combine the two, which is around about $442. But that is comparable roughly with the cost of the full-sized Go XLR. What you do not get there is necessarily the built-in soundboard, although the Stream Deck does have so much functionality to be able to do that anyway. So I would say that shouldn't be an issue for you. For example, you can integrate Voice Mod into the Stream Deck Plus, and that basically gives you a voice changer anyway. I'm going to go through a couple more options here. I personally tested out a number of different Loop Deck devices. Most recently, the Loop Deck Live S. This comes in at £179, so a little bit more expensive than the Go XLR Mini, but a lot cheaper than the full-sized Go XLR around about $227. This has the knobs to fade up and down different audio inputs and outputs, and it also has buttons a little bit like the Elgato Stream Deck. The software is brilliant, and I had a really great time overall with the Loop Deck Live. It's not quite as well established as the Elgato Stream Deck product, but I'm sure you would find that product very good. However, similarly to the Elgato Stream Decks, it does not have an XLR input. So if you're thinking of getting a Loop Deck to replace your Go XLR, think twice about it you will also need some sort of xlr input to go with it so you're basically pairing it similarly to the stream deck plus and the wave xlr razer did bring out like a direct ripoff kind of copy of the go xlr and they weren't even secretive about it, it was basically a direct copy razer is kind of a half decent middle level peripheries brand although they're not really that popular in the audio space they have some usb microphones over the years but have not been that popular in the xlr space i've not personally tested the razer audio mixer but it does come in at 190 pounds which is more expensive than the go xlr mini i wonder if people at razer sort of knew that tc helicon at some point were going to make their staff redundant and that's one of the reasons why they've released this i can't personally recommend the razer hardware because I've not tried it out. Again, it had quite mixed reviews. As with all of these things, it's normally the software that lets it down. And Razer has been known to have not great audio software, particularly for their newer products. If you want to go with a much cheaper option, Fine Fine, which is a brand that I've reviewed a couple of different USB microphones for, do have an AmpliGame SC3 device, which comes in at a whopping 49 dollars that's the price i saw online just now which is kind of crazy it's virtually a direct copy of the go xlr but it's much cheaper it will be built with probably cheaper parts and even though i like the fine fine brand the microphones were much higher quality than i expected them to be i do not expect the fine fine sc3 to be a direct replacement in terms of quality than the go xlr however i know there'll be people watching this video that maybe don't have a very high budget and basically will just want to get something that will do a job for them. I did actually tweet Fine Fine and ask them to send me a copy of the device because they sent me some other devices in the past, but they told me that I needed to email them and I forgot to email them, so they never actually sent me a version of it. Maybe I'll reach out to a few of these brands now and get them to send me them and I'll do a more detailed review and give my better recommendations. Finally, though, there is a more premium option you can go with. The Rodecaster Pro and the Rodecaster Pro 2 are the Rode audio hardware equivalent of the Go XLRs. The Rodecaster Pro 2 in particular is probably slightly better than the Go XLR full-sized, although these things are very, very expensive. The Rodecaster Pro, for example, comes in at £463, and if you want the Pro 2, it's £625, which if we're talking about dollars, $588, $793. That's a lot to spend on an audio device, 
particularly if you've had the uh, the GoXLR Mini, which is obviously a lot cheaper. I want to just close off the video by saying what will I actually do here. I'm thinking I'm probably going to get a Elgato Stream Deck Plus and also a Wave XLR device and try them out because uh, I know the software is good. I know Elgato are not going on anywhere. If you didn't know, Elgato is owned by Corsair, which is a multi-billion pound company. It's pretty much the biggest streaming hardware brand in the market. It. I think this means I probably won't have to replace these products again in the near future. I know that the quality of those products is likely to be good. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. It's so frustrating that this has happened, especially for me. My video views on those are going to start to go down and down and down. I'm going to have to start putting out more content. Ugh. <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree. Really sad that TC Helicon are basically killing off the GoXLR by laying off the support staff in Canada. Hopefully somebody picks up the mantle somewhere. I directly want to call out Harris Heller, Epos Vox, maybe collaborate together with a brand, an audio brand, to reinvigorate the GoXLR brand and maybe bring some innovation to it. That is a direct call out to you guys. I know you'll do an absolutely brilliant job of it and I certainly would love to get my hands on a product that you guys have had heavy input like that. As always, if you found this useful, don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe too. See you later.